Let me start off by telling you all a little story. Back in the good old days of not too long ago, I got my first video game console, and that just so happened to be a Nintendo Wii. Now for those unaware, which I mean, come on, who isn't? The Wii was Nintendo's big push into family gaming. These two guys would show up at your door and be like, We would like to play. And then you would play virtual Wii Golf. Man, things were crazy back in 2006. But my point is, the Wii was all about that couch co-op. Mario Kart, Wii Sports, Wii Sports but on an island, Wii Sports but it makes you healthy, Wii Sports but you can play games. Wait, they had games on this thing? No matter what was going down, you could always catch me and my brother playing some video games on this console. Skip forward a few years and we were so graciously gifted this little thing called an Xbox 360. This thing had a controller that came in one piece, count them, one piece. Man, that's crazy stuff. Me and my brother played the hell out of this thing. Minecraft, Call of Duty, Halo, Halo 2, Halo 3, Halo Reach, Halo 4, Halo Back, blah, 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 blah. Back then, games let you have two screens on one screen. Who just thunk it? So, growing up as a little gamer boy, I mainly played as player two. Couch co-op wasn't an option. Couch co-op was video games. We didn't play Mario Party. We just played Mario game. <laughs> that was stupid. But good things always come to an end. My brother didn't want to play video games with me anymore and I was left to sit around and watch The Simpsons by myself. For a time, I didn't play games at all. I liked the idea of them and I've always had a fascination with arcade games and retro games, but I didn't have any games to play, nor anyone to play them with. Skip forward, you know, quite a lot of years and I decided to buy myself one of those Nintendo Switches. Now, I love my Switch and I love the games on it. But most of all, I love playing games with friends. I had this obsession with buying different types of controllers for the console because I wanted to play with people. You got the red Joy-Cons, the blue Raspberry Joy-Cons, the Wired Pro Controller, Knockoff Pro Controller, GameCube Controller 1 and 2 with Adaptive Pods, SNES Pro Controller that kind of leaks battery acid and, and like, don't buy this controller, it's gross. So yeah, my Switch was mainly for those little Mario Kart games that you share with someone. I was the couch co-op boy, let's go! But in recent years, however, I've come across this pretty underground concept that's maybe a little too avant-garde for some. But from research and word of mouth, I've discovered the single player game. I mean, I've played a few, but on reflection, I didn't really play that many of them growing up other than a little bit of Skyrim here and there. So I dived headfirst in the world of not just being player one, but being player only one. But when doing so, something began to bother me. When playing certain games, I get this overbearing feeling that looms over me. And that feeling is loneliness. Playing games alone is lonely. Just the game and you. No one to get you back. No one to help you when you realise how bad you are at solving puzzles in Portal 2. No Mugman to help you kill this stupid bee lady in Cuphead. Not having that player 2 makes you realise just how alone you are. It's up to you whether you win or lose. Hell, even when the game is player versus player, it's always more comforting to hear your friend tell you how bad you are at the game when you die. <laughs> rather than nothing but the sound of the game telling you how bad you are. You can see this contrast a lot with games that you can play both single player and multiplayer. Look at Minecraft, when you play this game with your friends, it's great. You get to build things together, help each other out, you know, just play multiplayer. But once you turn that off, once you go offline, no servers, no couch co-op, just you and the big MC, it feels so empty. There's no one to talk to, no one to show your creations to, no one to help you build them. You're alone, just left to wonder the infinite world of nothing but blocks and listen to C418's music that makes you wish you had a friend. <laughs> because what's Mario without his Luigi, okay? <laughs> Open world games, you know them, you love them, hate them, or just don't really play them, but you gotta admit, it's a pretty cool idea. A whole world of wonder and fun and things for you to explore, all on this little disc. Ever since the dawn of open world games, you know, back in caveman times, the idea of bigger worlds being better and more immersive was always a big selling point. You want to walk around 12 square miles of land in Red Dead Redemption? Well think again partner, because Red Dead 2's got 75 square miles if I do say so myself. <laughs> But with the promise of a larger world also comes a little bit too much of that loneliness. Alright, let's look at say, Skyrim, some good old Elder Rolls 5. Playing this game you'll be all like, whoa look at all this stuff, there's, there's this whole world to explore, so many places to visit, so, so many NPCs to meet, so many ice monkeys to fight. But in reality, a lot of open world games like Skyrim feel for the most part, empty. <laughs> open world games more like, empty world games, am I right? 
Anyway, when you take the journey from A to B in these games, something just feels missing. That sense of loneliness overwhelms the player because you realize that in this huge world, it's just you and the ice monkeys. Sure, there are NPCs that, you know, walk around and stuff, but in the grand scheme of things, open world games feel kind of empty. A lot of them fill the world with all this cool stuff, but it's mainly in a few areas, just spread out across an empty map. If walking through miles of nothing was supposed to be fun, then why do you think fast travel exists? Look at freaking Norman Sky, the game promised players that they can discover a million billion different planets and pretty much all of them just felt completely empty. And I mean, I know the game's got updates and stuff, but you get what I mean. Now some game devs are aware of this issue of big worlds feeling kind of empty, and that's when you get games like Deus Ex Mankind Divided. This game purposefully uses a little open world to cut away most of the fat that open world games have, allowing the game to focus more on the gameplay and well-written characters and all that jazz. Game Maker's Toolkit has a good video on it, so go watch that. Anyway, that feeling of loneliness you get isn't always unintentional when it comes to game design. Some game devs want you to suffer and realise how lonesome you really are. The feeling of loneliness in games isn't always a byproduct of how they're designed. In many cases, games are specifically designed to make you feel lonely. In The Legend of Smelda, Bad Breath of the Wild, you play as Stink, a hero that wakes up a hundred years after a great war, in which all your bros have died and probably this princess lady, I don't know. It's up to you alone to save Hyrule. Everything is trying to kill you, and the people that help you are just ghosts of the past. This game really contrasts with other 3D Smelda games because it's the only one where Stink doesn't have a little companion to help him in his journey. In the other games, you got a bird, a furry, whatever this thing is, even a boat. But in Bad Breath, you got nothing. <laughs> well, I mean, you got an iPad, but that doesn't really count. Stink just wonders the vast and destroyed world of Hyrule where everything wants to kill him. Speaking of which, Dark Souls. Dark Souls is a pretty lonely game. It's just you against the world. And spoiler alert, the world of Dark Souls isn't exactly fun of little friends. Basically, everything is trying to kill you. Well, not this guy. He gives you some cool potions. What a nice guy. Hey, you want to be friends? No! Now, Dark Souls makes you feel both connected and disconnected from people through bloodstains and messages found in the game. Bloodstains are a mechanic where, when touched, they show you a ghost of how another player has died. And messages are, yeah, you guessed it, a little message left by other players. No, that doesn't sound that lonely. Mechanics like these let the player know that there are other people out there suffering through the same game that they are. But at the same time, it feels like the developers are just teasing you, being so close to the other players, but still being boxed into your own world and just being alone. Now, I can hear some of you souls heads saying, well, if you go over here, talk to this lady, kill this guy, get this item, press up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, I start, then you'll be able to play with a friend as well as another mechanic where other players can join your game and decide to either help or attack you. And sure, mechanics like these do make Dark Souls less of a single player game, but when you use these mechanics in your game, the other players are just a mere ghost, a figment of another world. Once they die, they're gone, no respawns. And all you get is that feeling of loneliness just creeping back, knowing that you're alone to fight and die again. The game devs using loneliness is something that you see quite a lot in games when you start to think of it. Games like Subnautica where you crash land on a completely submerged planet where it's up to you to survive. In the game everybody's gone to the rapture, everybody's just despawned on you, leaving you to try and figure out what happened. Then you got games like Alien Isolation which, you know, it has isolation in the title. You got the one and only Strand type game which has you running through a barren wasteland trying to reconnect the world. You got games like Hollow Knight, where the game devs really drive that knife into your little game at heart, mainly with the character of Myla. After making a friend with this little mining bug, you come back later in the game to find she's been infected. Now she's just another enemy for you to kill, showing that no matter what, you'll always be alone. Jeez, that is sad. That is really sad. Now this wouldn't be a true guy video if I didn't talk about Firewatch, a game about a guy who tries to escape his problems by becoming a Firewatch lookout for the summer. Walking through the old Shoshone forest in this game really does make you feel alone. Just miles and miles of trees and, you know, deers and stuff. But strangely enough, Firewatch is a game that makes me feel very much not alone when I play, mainly due to the character of Delilah in the walkie talkie. Walking around the forest alone sucks, but when there's someone there that you can talk to and tell about every little thing that you come across in the game, it makes the dialogue trees genuinely interesting and entertaining. Okay, enough of me talking about Firewatch, I already made a video on this game, so watch that after this if you want to, of course, you don't have to. Anyway, moving on. For this last segment, we're gonna get a little existential, so buckle up. Video games are great, they're a way for us to escape into a reality that's unlike our own, be somebody else, have some fun, 
take a ride on a roller coaster. All this cool stuff. But when you really think about what a video game truly is, you just realize how lonely the single player experience is. You as the player are dropped into this artificial world, a world that only you understand to be a game. You talk to NPCs, go on quests, kill monsters and whatnot. But when you know that the game is just that, a game, the immersion is broken. Those NPCs are just mere lines of code. Nothing is real. And of course it isn't, it's a video game. We knew that already. But you as the player, being the only person in this world with the knowledge that it's not real, these lives, these situations, having that knowledge or any knowledge at all completely isolates the player from the simulation. As humans, our brains sense that something isn't quite right. We can never be fully immersed. There's always that part of us that knows we're just sat there alone, wishing we weren't. Damn, I thought video games were supposed to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know, I kind of went off the rails a bit at the end in that last segment, and it didn't really make too much sense, but what I'm trying to say with this video is, does anyone want to hop on some Halo custom games with me? Anyway, I've been me, you've been you, subscribe if you want, you don't have to, <laughs> and I hope everyone had a great holiday. See ya.